Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Master Paul. I'm honored to be connecting with you today on this Facebook live stream and this podcast. Today is uh, March 20, 2017. And today's uh, Facebook live stream and podcast is on the subject of Shen, Qi, and Jing. And the nature of Shen, Qi, and Jing, and how when it is not in alignment, not in balance with our health and well-being, how we can have significant blockages in our life, and how when we align to it, how that can also bring significant alignment and balance in our life. So today, during this uh, one-hour teaching wisdom and blessing, I will be sharing with you the wisdom and teachings on this subject matter brought to you by my teacher whose name is Master Shah. And for those that are new or watching this for the first time, listening to this for the first time, uh, my teacher Master Shah is a world-renowned healer. He is an actual doctor. He trained in traditional Chinese medicine and received a doctorate. He also received a doctorate in Western medicine. He is a world-class acupuncturist and has worked on heads of countries, is very world-renowned. He even taught at the World Health Organization. Where he is actually more well known is he is the um, developer of a world-class uh, philosophy on soul over matter. That when you bring healing and balance to the soul level blockages first, then the mind and body will follow. And one of the beautiful things about Dr. Master Shah's wisdom and teachings is that it validates itself out through practice. He has written over 20 books, 21 actually, in which 11 have reached the New York Times bestsellers list. So to be able to reach uh, the bestsellers list is not an easy feat. To do it 11 times must mean that some of the wisdom that is being shared is very valuable and uh, readily accepted as effective by millions and millions and millions of people. And so, having applied the wisdom that I'll be sharing with you today, <clears throat> myself, in my life, I have seen extraordinary changes on the physical level. My health is much, much better. On the emotional level, I am substantially more balanced and uh, occasionally do have bouts of emotions, but they're dramatically less than before. And when they do arise, I apply the wisdom and practices and immediately are able to, to bring them into a place of balance and actually move to a place of love, gratitude, forgiveness, and compassion much more readily. And so the ability to apply this wisdom, these, these blessings, these techniques, are truly remarkable. Uh, Dr. Master Shah is also the founder of the Love, Peace, Harmony Worldwide Movement. And this movement is so extraordinary. He is, um, he is dedicated to serve humanity at the highest levels I have ever seen in a human being. He travels literally 10 months of the year around the world, uh, serving countless, countless hours, probably sleeping maybe four hours uh, in the course of an entire day uh, because he is busy answering phones, receiving uh, requests for, for life-threatening uh, conditions, and offering blessings to assist people at the level of soul. So the more you know, the more you'll know. I encourage you to learn a little bit more about Master Shah, and you can find that information at, at uh, drsha.com, drshah.com. <clears throat> you can find more about the Love, Peace, Harmony movement at lovepeaceharmony.org. So that's uh, a little synopsis for those that are new, enjoying this for the very first time. Um, now, Shen Qi and Jing uh, is the subject of today's subject matter and it is actually a newer set of teachings uh, one of the unique things about Master Shah is that he teaches in flow he receives information from the source and shares it he takes no claim to the wisdom uh, takes no credit for the thousands literally um, hundreds of thousands of people that of their own accord claim to have received amazing uh, miracle healings um, and he states very clearly that he's not doing it. He is simply a vessel to serve humanity. Um, and he's grateful for the opportunity to be a servant. And I am grateful for the opportunity to be connected with you here today to share with you some of the wisdom and teachings. 
<coughs> if they serve you, by all means, continue to practice. If they do not align to what is important to you, if you have difficulty with accepting the wisdom and teachings, then by all means, continue with what is working for you. Um, one of the great wisdoms that Master Shah has brought is that he is not here to change anybody's perspectives or beliefs. He's just here to share what has worked for him and what has worked for other millions. And he, again, uh, asks that you have an open mind. And so I'd like to stop for a moment and acknowledge some of those that are tuning in. And so welcome to CJ Aloha Kristen Rojas. Welcome Susan Birch Moore. Aloha Casey, thank you for uh, joining us today. I'm glad to hear that these, uh, the wisdom and blessings has helped your growth immensely. Uh, please thank, thank the Divine. Thank for bringing the many, many beautiful souls. Uh, Divine has brought Jesus, has brought Mother Mary, has brought Buddha, great beings. And uh, uh, I, I believe that Master Shah is one of those beautiful souls that is here to serve humanity in a similar way. So please offer your gratitude in the right places. I am just a messenger. Uh, welcome to Lisa Marie. Welcome Angie. <coughs> welcome Linda Jensen. And Susan, welcome Rena. And also, um, welcome Pat, welcome Sharon, welcome Zilki. And so I want to uh, invite you to pay attention to the, to the podcast that I'm doing as a result of these live streams. I am putting them on iTunes, I'm putting them on Stitcher, I'm putting them on TuneIn, and of course they're on my website. If you go to my website, asolhuder.com, and click on the uh, menu bar, <clears throat> you will see blogs. Also, it's on my first page if you scroll down through. And um, uh, my blog, by the way, is called Soul Food. I thought that was kind of cute. But anyway, on there, you'll see the podcasts. And um, I'm trying to get visibility and get ranking amongst the podcast community. In order for that to occur, if you would go there and um, download, uh, that would be excellent. And you can do that if you're an iTunes fan, you're an Apple fan, then click on the, <coughs> the choice to, um, to uh, subscribe through iTunes. If you belong to other ones, then click on that. If you've never done uh, a um, podcast, basically, it's a way to listen on your phone. Uh, and so, for example, if you had iTunes, you would go to your iTunes, you would choose the section called Podcast, which is right there next to Videos and Audios, and when you're in that section, you can find anything. Mine is called the Tao of Spiritual Awakening. That I had to give the, a title to the, um, to the entire stream. So it's called the Tao of Spiritual Awakening. And one of the great uh, features of that is that once you have this, uh, uh, you, can, you can download a Stitcher app, you can download an Intunes app, you can download a Blueberry app, or even the iTunes app, and you can listen to these podcasts. So you can actually, it's, of course, I'm so happy you're here live, but it's an opportunity to hear some of the other shows I've done in the past. And you can specifically fast forward to some of the, um, the, the blessing aspects. So when I'm doing the mantras, when I'm doing the blessings, uh, when I'm doing the practices, you can go straight to those areas and do them again. So there's a great value in having this access from things uh, that have been done already, as you can go back to them. They're also a great way to share. So you can uh, discover a new way to listen to this. And please download it. Uh, download the app and then download the, uh, the uh, uh, recordings. So thank you so much for that opportunity to, to do that little advertisement, <coughs> as this will help me to serve so, so many more souls. Um, and so... Let's see if anyone else has joined us here today. Welcome, Johnny. Okay. And so we have a core group here today. It seems that either when I do the live stream on the Facebook platform on the computer, either they, they don't stretch out to the same number of people that I do when I'm on a telephone uh, and or um, there are a lot of people doing so many things on today's President's Day uh, since it is a holiday. Um, so... I had an opportunity today before I go into the teachings to practice what I preach. You know, I always talk about love and forgiveness and working through the blockages and anything that comes up. So I'll share with you my process today. I was at the coffee shop this morning uh, doing work and um, I uh, 
knew it was president, I knew it was a holiday, so I pulled up to where the paid parking is, where you put the quarters in the machine, and uh, <clears throat> I saw the sign, and it said free on Sundays and state holidays. So I pulled up my handy phone, and I looked up State of Hawaii holidays. And several places I looked it up. And it said, yes, today is President's Day. It is a State of Hawaii holiday. I said, okay. I went ahead and pulled in there and parked it and put any quarters in. So I'm sitting inside the coffee shop a couple hours later, and, and, and I hear a message. You know, I I'm, I'm very clearly hear a message. I'm just sitting in front of my computer, and I hear, go out and check your car. And so I walk up, I look out the window. Sure enough, there's a policeman right across the street at that very moment giving me a ticket. Wonderful. So now I'm challenged with an irritation. And so I walk back, I grab my phone because I wanted to take um, uh, and show him on the phone that it says state holiday. And so I walked out and he was already leaving in his little, uh, little motor cart. <clears throat> and so I addressed him professionally, sir, you know, I recognize you gave me a ticket but you do realize today is a state holiday. He proceeded to tell me if I'm working and I work for the state, then it must not be a state holiday. So he was not interested in what I had to say. So I had to watch my, my irritation, my frustration, because I shared with him, I'm not an idiot. I checked, you know, look, I'm happy to show you what's on the phone. I went through about an hour of processing after that, complaining, criticism, irritation, all of those things that I say, we're not supposed to be doing, but you know, I'm human, no different than anybody else. We have to work with our human emotions. And uh, it took me actually about two hours to get to the point of forgiveness. So how did I go about clearing this with myself? Well, first of all, I said, okay, this means that somewhere on the line, I have in this or previous time, misused my power, abused uh, my authority, and was offering a lack of compassion, a lack of respect, and a lack of honoring for factual information. And so I had to do a forgiveness practice for that because that's the experience I was, I was witnessing. That's the, uh, um, I was uh, witnessing a lack of compassion for me. I was witnessing a lack of respect and honoring. I was witnessing an abuse of authority. And so I could blame them. I could... Um, you know, uh, uh, complain for more and more and more hours. But each time I'm complaining, heaven is up there going, tick, negative, tick, negative, tick, negative. I'm filling up my negative virtue bank. Not a good thing to do because it impacts my Shen, Qi, and Jing, which is a subject of today's uh, uh, conversation. And in, in recognizing this, I did my forgiveness practice around it. I also asked for forgiveness for this officer and any of his relatives if I had been uh, misuse of my power in this or any previous lifetime. And I offered them my unconditional forgiveness and I asked for forgiveness if I had done anything like that uh, to him or his loved ones in previous times. So um, there's also a, a side note to this. I received a blessing yesterday at uh, the Kickstart Your Dow Business Workshop. And I was one of the lead presenters in this. <coughs> and in doing this, I received a, a blessing for success. I honored $250 for this blessing for success from this very special calligraphy. And I was happy to do that. I believed that the money would return, as it always has whenever I've honored for a blessing. But I see this happen today. And I receive my bills like everybody else. And so I have some chatter going on in my head. Uh, you know, negative chatter about the financial aspects. And I got a message. My, my, my Heavens team gave me a message and they said, pay attention to the lesson we are giving you. So I said, wow, this is a lesson? What is the lesson? And I heard, when you are given huge blessings, you will also be given testing to check it, if you are appreciative if you recognize of what brought you the conditions in which you needed to receive a blessing, if you recognize the, um, the, um, the testing. So they were testing me with financial uh, restrictive conditions to see if I trust 
the blessing, to see if I'm going to complain, to see if I am going to say, ah, I see you, thank you for this blessing. Thank you for the opportunity to recognize the testing. So this is another way that heaven works, because when you are on the spiritual path, uh, there is only about one third of the time when you're not in testing. The rest of the time, heaven loves you. Heaven wants you to move towards the like of our beloved Jesus. They wa heaven wants us to move towards the like of our beloved spiritual fathers before us. And in order to move towards their, um, their purity, we must remove these kinds of blockages, blockages of, of irritation, blockages of financial attachment, blockages of trust. Uh, and this is how much heaven loves us, to give us these kinds of tests. So it's quite interesting, um, and a big part of it is first recognizing it, second, moving through it with gratitude. You've heard teachings before where we, uh, it is important to be grateful, no matter if, if we judge it as a good thing or a bad thing. And so most of us will dwell in something like this for far longer than we need to. And it might stay with us as a thorn in our side for a long, long time. We could post on Facebook, that SOB, I can't believe he did that, blah, blah, blah. And, of course, <laughs> that just generates more unpleasant spiritual debt. And so I thought I would use this, uh, this life experience today to share with you how we can employ the wisdom and teaching that Master Shah brings to us of love and forgiveness, how we can recognize a teaching, how we can turn it into a wisdom and reverse it in such a way that uh, we can process through it much faster. Now by processing through it in this way, I now open my heart again instead of allowing it to be closed by this condition. I now allow myself to receive the financial blessings that I know are coming and I inhibit the ability for, uh, for tightening the noose around my own virtue bank, so to speak. And so we actually do per individually tighten the noose on our own virtue bank by the virtue of um, uh, holding on to grudges, holding on to irritations, holding on to self-righteousness, holding on to those things that basically close our heart. Okay? So I hope you learn from my experiences. And now I'm going to turn that into an application of today's wisdom and teaching, which is on the nature of Shen, Qi, and Jing. Now, Master Sha is a Mandarin Chinese... Uh, uh, originally, and he speaks pretty good English for the most part. Uh, however, he always elucidates us with uh, one or two phrases from um, a Chinese language and then turns it into English language and, and t does the entire teaching in English, of course. But Shen Qi and Jing means soul, energy, and matter. More expansive, Shen breaks down. Shen breaks into soul, heart, and mind. Qi is life force energy. Not just our life force, all life force. And Jing is matter. Now Shen, Qi, and Jing is in everything. Literally, Shen, Qi, and Jing in, is infused in everything you can see and everything you cannot see, including that which has not come into manifestation. Science has proved by their, their most powerful microscopes that there is 99% space and 1% of materialized matter, and that the smallest energy, they're calling it matter. <laughs> and um, every 10 or so years, some new f way of discovering something smaller occurs. The, the general teachings of Tao is Tao is bigger than biggest and smaller than smallest. So my teacher would say, for example, that they will always continue to suffer something smaller because Tao is smaller than smallest. What is Tao? Tao is source. Tao is everything. So everything is bigger than you can possibly imagine and smaller than you'll ever be able to discover. And so everything has original creator in it. Original creator is soul, is energy, is a, a matter. Original soul is soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter. Why is Shen inclusive of soul, heart, and mind? 
because Shen is the only one that has three three aspects to it. Energy and matter is stands by itself. Energy and matter. Shen, however, carries three unique aspects: soul, heart, and mind. Uh, that wisdom was brought specifically for us here at the human level. When a being uh, moves higher and higher and higher, they're no longer individual mind. They become a oneness consciousness. And that is because they are fused with the heart and the soul of original creator. So in the human realm, we have mind. Um, and so soul precedes the heart, which precedes the mind, which precedes the energy, which precedes the matter. Now I'm going to work from the bottom up to give you an example of the nature of Shen, Qi, and Jing. We're going to start with Jing. J-I-N-G. Jing. Jing is reflective of all things that, uh, that have a material form. Basically, the, uh, the manifest world. And that includes earth, that includes plants, that includes the chair you're sitting, and that includes your blood, your cells, matter. Everything that we can see in the manifest world is matter. And in actuality, according to the Tao uh, uh, wisdom that Master Shah has brought to us, everything is actually smaller and smaller matter. You, we would think, I would think, that it is smaller and smaller energy that has yet to become matter. But at least to the teachings he's received so far, everything is actually the very smallest pieces of matter. And that is why science, when they keep looking at it, they can still find smaller pieces of it. They can't find smaller pieces of energy because you can't see that. Uh, they don't have technology strong enough to see that. But they do have technology that can see matter. And they keep seeing smaller versions of it. And then they give it a name like a proton or a quark or something like that. But um, Jing is matter. So related to our human vessel, our human being, Shen, Qi, and Jing is what we are made up of. And when we are completely and fully aligned, meaning our soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter are in a perfect alignment, then we are in essence in oneness with our original creator. We are in a place of oneness. When we have liver cancer, when we have depression, when we have uh, schizophrenia, when we have conditions, significant conditions with our finances, when we have significant relationship problems, this means we are out of alignment with Shen, Qi, and Jing. So the blocks that are perfectly in alignment have these jig jags coming off them, and it's completely dispersed and out of alignment. How do we know that this is the case? And what causes our Shen, Qi, and Jing to be out of alignment? What causes it to be out of alignment is our separation from original source creator. Original source creator creates all things and carries the message of love. Original source creator uh, is all things. You and I have soul. Every speck of energy, every speck of matter has soul. And this soul carries original message of love. In the uh, experiential nature of Creator giving us as human beings free will, the right to experience, the ability to experience, in giving us that ability, we could have just chosen to stay with the experience of love. And we could have bumped into our fellow soul to the left and to the right of us and sent love. But some of us in experiencing chose to uh, change that message and in changing that message we created a um, an imbalance that imbalance is encompassed in what we might call this is an example what we might call the yin yang world the yin of yin and the and the world of yang the the uh, up and down the wrong and the right basically it's all that is not in alignment with oneness and so Shen, Qi, and Jing goes all the way up to original source. Anything that is out of alignment with that falls into the world of yin and yang, falls into the world of a lack of balance. And so we have lack of balance in relationship, lack of balance in finances, lack of balance in various aspects of our life. Back to the subject of Jing. So now that we know that 
imbalances in Shen, Qi, and Jing are as a result of original separation from Creator, then uh, how is that dealt with at the level of the human experience? Well, if we use physical health as an example, somebody might have a, a, a major health condition that's labeled cancer, somebody else might have a major uh, emotional condition that's labeled depression, and so forth. These conditions, from the perspective of the highest spiritual perspective, are simply imbalances caused by wrong thoughts, wrong words, or wrong actions taken by us or our ancestors against another soul. So when we were in the original form, in our free will form, and we bumped up against another soul, and we took a wrong action, kind of like we bump up against that guy back in the street, we say, hey, that is not an action in love. So somewhere on the line, potentially billions and billions and billions of years ago, we started bumping up against each other, started making some wrong choices. This has then brought about the manifestations that we're working with, and we're all going through this with the greatest love that we can, knowing that love is, of course, the only solution to everything, knowing that love is what feels the best to us, knowing that alignment to our beloved Creator is what makes us feel the most at home and the most cherished, everything we ever strive for is to receive more of that. Why? Because innately, our soul knows that that is what will fix everything. Innately, it's like, it's like a, a fish. It will go upstream. Regard, it doesn't matter if it dies trying to jump that fall. It will continue to try to go upstream because that's its innate knowing. We innately know that we are love, and we are innately moving back towards that as much as possible. And so uh, we, we, there are much, much faster ways to accomplish this. But in the example of the human realm with a physical malady, what they try to do with our basic current knowledge, we try to address the Shen Qi Jing blockages at the level of Jing, at least in the Western medicine model. This is an example so your brain can understand. And so what do we do? We try to adjust the Jing. Let's say it was a cancerous condition. What do they do? They cut it out. They try to uh, fix the matter imbalance by removing the matter that they judge as um, uh, 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 tainted or, or bad. Okay? Um, I have a bad knee. What do they do? They go in there and they, they cut it to try to fix the bad knee. And so uh, they'll also will use pharmaceuticals. I'm not against them. I'm very happy to have them if I have pain. And what do they do? They adjust the chemical imbalance, which adjusts the matter. Okay? This is how it's addressed at the human level, with Jing, matter. With Qi, energy, uh, that is something that the Western model does not give much credit or value to, because they can't see it with their devices. On the other hand, uh, for the Eastern philosophies that anchor themselves with the knowingness that the human vessel has a, is an energy vehicle, they recognize what's called energy meridians, they recognize what's called chakras or soul houses, they recognize that, that when chi flows, when energy flows in the body, then blood follows. Chi dao, yi dao. And so, uh, what they do in the Eastern uh, model for the physical body, for the uh, emotion uh, condition of, let's say, depression or something like that, is they will suggest herbs. They will do uh, fire massages or moxibustion, or they will do acupuncture. Uh, these are some examples of Eastern philosophies. Uh, also, if you move into uh, some yogic traditions or um, some of the other Eastern philosophies, they start to incorporate spirituality to move the chi. Okay, and so, uh, and when they move the chi through these actualities, then blood follows. As blood follows, then the ideology is that healing can occur. So you have the model of Jing, and you have the model of Qi. Now, what Master Shah brings to us is an understanding that there is something higher than that. And so he was connecting to the Tao, to the Source, and he was saying. What moves the chi? And heaven said, the mind moves the chi. Oh, great. What moves the mind? And heaven said, the heart is the leader of the mind. He said, oh, that makes complete sense. 
and he's been working with that for a long time. And one day he asked, well, what moves the heart? And the answer was, the soul. The soul is the boss. The soul is the leader. The soul lives forever. And it knows all of our blockages, and it has tremendous wisdom from all of its uh, insights and all of its gains. And the soul is the leader of our life. We are, as you've heard before, a soul having a physical experience. And so, as a soul having a physical experience, obviously, from a very logical perspective, the soul is in charge of our life. And yet we run through life with physical problems, emotional worries, concerns, uh, 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 financial blockages, relationship blockages. And if we just stopped and started putting into our life a recognition of the nature of things, that we're living in a yin-yang world that was created from imbalances that we or our ancestors had made by moving against love in our thoughts or words or actions. And in that movement against love, against others, which are us, by the way, we are all from the same source. So we might look at another and say, they have red hair, I have blonde hair, so therefore they're not me, so therefore I will judge them. Well, that's an imbalance. That is obviously not love. And so just by a, a, a slight view of somebody in the incorrect manner, we are creating a spiritual blockage, a separation from oneness, a separation from source. These are examples of a Shen Qi Jing blockage. So in the current industry, in the current model to try to bring us to a place of balance, health and well-being, to try to maintain the highest health and well-being of what we have, what do we try to do? We try to fix things at the level of energy and matter. Or we try to employ mind over matter. That has worked actually very well. It works uh, for the most part in, in very beautiful ways. But there are times just like with uh, pharmaceuticals or cutting things out, it doesn't work. Just like with herbs and acupuncture, it doesn't work. And just like with mind over matter, it doesn't always work. So the question becomes, well, why and what can we do about that? Because the model doesn't go upwards, by the way, guys. If, if you do things at the Jing level, it doesn't resolve the energy blockage. If you do it to, at the energy blockage, it could resolve some of the, the, the Jing blockage, some of the matter blockage, but it doesn't resolve the mind blockage. And so it doesn't go up. The, the flow of life is from the top down. And this is why balancing the Shen Qi and Jing of our life is so very, very important. And so in accomplishing this, we need to understand that the leader is the soul. And the leader of our soul is, of course, our beloved creator. Now, so it stands to reason that as we start to align the heart and the mind and the soul and the heart and the mind, everything that is running beneath it will naturally align. Okay, Because if you think of uh, our life as uh, th think of your physical body and imagine a tube of light running from the, the base of your feet all the way through your body up to your beloved creator. Now, at the top is creator. So the funnel is as wide as it can be. We're down here and that funnel comes down to a very narrow point down to us. You see that? So coming up the top of your head, the funnel goes very, very wide, as wide as creator can be. Tao is bigger than biggest. But as soon as it gets to the top of our head, it starts narrowing down. Okay? When we start connecting at the level of soul, when we start opening our heart, when we start doing things like forgiveness, like love for the various areas of our life, then naturally the channel opens wider. As the channel opens wider, the energy flows more clearly. Because whose energy is it? Is it ours? No. It's heaven's energy. And it's not flowing through us because of our Shen, Qi, and Jing blockages. Karma, spiritual debt, wrong choices, thoughts, words, and actions against others, against our self, create the blockages. How do we resolve it? Reconnection to the soul, reconnection to our beloved creator, opening our heart, releasing the spiritual blockages. This is how we realign the Shen, Qi, and Jing. Okay? 
how do we reconnect to the soul? Well, the first part is recognizing that we are part of our beloved Creator. So some of us that are listening to this for the first time, and some even now, even though this conversation has occurred in many different ways before, with you, with others that are listening, might be getting this aha moment for the very first time. And you might be going, okay, I understand this, but how do I reconnect to my soul? I, I talk to it, but I can't hear it. You must open your spiritual channels to, to connect with heaven and your soul. We are a physical being with energetic apparatus. Okay? And that energetic apparatus includes the seven soul houses, and it includes the, the energy meridian system, and it includes all of the space that runs through the entirety of our physical vehicle. We see it as a body, but if you were in heaven looking down, they would not see a physical body. They would simply see a light vessel. But the light vessel they would see would not be a, a brilliant 100% pure light. They would see one that is vague and has um, a clouds of darkness throughout it. Those clouds of darkness are the Shen Qi and Jing blockages that are representative of the wrong thoughts, words, and actions made against others. And so the ability to clear these, in essence, can be done through practice. We practice by opening our heart to love, by doing practices to serve others, by doing practices to forgive ourselves and to forgive others, by doing practices to align our uh, uh, energetic vehicle to the source. This is how we apply it. So the ability to express this to you in the way that I've expressed it would not be possible if it wasn't for my beloved Creator uh, giving me 30 years of different jobs that had nothing to do with this, what I'm sharing now, that gave me the ability, A, to communicate, B, to have a greater understanding, uh, C, to have many different masters that taught various pieces of wisdom that have led me to the ability to express this in a way where it could make sense. Master Shah, we are exceedingly blessed, is a, a, uh, a vehicle of the divine, as many beautiful souls are, that just happens to have a bit more open spiritual channels than you and I. He has served humanity so many lifetimes that in this one, he didn't have the same crud that you and I have. He has done many, 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 many lifetimes clearing the blockages, doing the same things that I'm sharing with you. And because he started very early in life being trained by energy masters in China to clear the Shen Jing blockages, he became a grand master of Tai Chi, he became a grand master of Qi Gong. What is that? That's movement of life force energy. That's opening of our spiritual channels. That's opening of our spiritual vessel and receiving more and more of that channel that's always coming in. So he is no more special or more, no more less special than you and I. He just happened to be doing it quite a bit longer. And as a result, did not have as much crud as you and I in this lifetime. He has been doing it a lot longer. Therefore, the crud was cleared quite a bit uh, faster because he had less of it to deal with in this life since he had been dealing with it many, many more lifetimes than you and I had. The reason this soul came back was because the, the higher level beings have a dedication to serve. They have a heart of service, an unconditional heart of service. Uh, my heart is to serve you. I'm doing the best I can. His heart is to bring this wisdom so he can serve many, many more millions of people. That is our goal because that is what opens our heart. That is what realigns our Shen, Qi, and Jing. And that is what clears our relationship blockages. That is what clears our financial blockages. That is what clears our health blockages. The higher service we can offer, the more blockages clear. More of heaven comes in, so to speak, and less of our unpleasant stuff bothers us. This is very common sense when you break it down. Now, all the other teachings that are out there really teach the same thing. Our beloved Christian teachings teach the same thing. Our beloved Buddhist te teachings, our beloved teachings of the, of the uh, Quran. The, the higher level teachings, they all teach love. The unique, about, the unique thing about Master Shah is he brings us practices and he brings um, tools to assist us. So now I'm going to apply these tools to assist us to bring balance as much as possible that we can accomplish today of our Shen, Qi, and Jing. Now I'm going to be using 
uh, a more recent book that Master Shah put out, out of his 21 books. This is, I think, uh, eight, 17, 18, or 19. It's called The Soul, Mind, Body, Science System. And in here, he has a calligraphy, which is Shen, Qi, Jing, He, Yi. You know what Shen, Qi, and Jing is? He, Yi is a Mandarin Chinese term that means becomes one. So soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter becomes one. Now there is a, a ancient philosophy that says what you chant is what you become. That is why, at least in the Eastern philosophies, they will chant a Buddha's name, Nam Amitofa, Nam Amitofa, Nama. You know, uh, there are many souls in the Western philosophies that will chant Love Jesus, love Jesus. Some will chant God, God, God. Some chant Om, Om, Om. What you chant is what you become. What does that mean? That means that you're aligning your Shen, Qi, and Jing to a higher frequency. Jesus has a higher frequency than you and I. Buddha has a higher frequency than you and I. Shen, Qi, Jing, He, Yi is, carries a message of oneness. Align my soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter. That's the message that it carries. What you chant is what you become. That is why we will use this mantra in today's practice. Now, all of the, the beings who come to serve, come to serve humanity, are given very special authorities and powers. After 20 years, literally over a million uh, uh, blessings and well over, uh, well over 10,000 uh, blessings that are recorded, Master Shah, of people saying, I had this suffering, now it's greatly reduced. Um, there is validation that Master Shah is one of those special beings to receive the authorities to transmit blessings into objects, books, uh, uh, people, and things to assist their Shen, Qi, and Jing to align, to release the spiritual debt blockages. I am blessed to be a master teacher uh, that has also received uh, this authority and ability to offer blessings that release Shen changing blockages dramatically faster than we can do on our own. And so he has placed into this calligraphy the uh, authority of aligning our Shen and Jing. And for those that have a spiritual third eye, those that can see uh, in the spiritual world, what does that mean? If your spiritual third eye is open and you can see, why can that person do that? Why can some of us not and some of us can? All it means is that they have cleared a few more of the blockages for that particular uh, channel, and heaven says, uh, you are a servant, we're going to give you these abilities so that you can be a better servant. That's all that means. Okay? They've cleared some of the Shen, Qi, and Jing in that spiritual channel. So, but if you were one of the souls that could see the blessings that were put into this calligraphy, then you would know very clearly that it is an extraordinary opportunity to receive some extraordinary blessings. I will ask these blessings to come to all of those that are listening, all of those that are watching on this live stream. And so we're going to employ the four powers. So where you are at, please sit up and prepare to do this practice. Please sit up straight. Feet flat on the floor unless you prefer lotus position. Bring your back away from the back of the chair, allowing the chi to flow freely without blockage. Touch your tongue very gently to the roof of your mouth. And if we're chanting out loud, of course, you would chant with me. But if we're chanting silently, keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. This is the body power. For the sound power, we will chant Shen Qi Jing He Yi. There is a mantra, kind of a song melody. I will chant it. You can chant with me. Uh, for the sound power, for creative visualization, the mind power, I would like you to see a column of light from heaven to earth. Earth is sending its column of light through you. Heaven is sending its column of light through you. Keep the majority of your focus in your lower abdomen, but visualize the entirety of this column getting brighter and stronger through this whole practice. That will be your creative visualization. Okay? Soul power. Repeat after me. 
Dear my beloved Creator, dear all the beings of light serving the plan of the light side, all lamas, sifus, gurus, and saints, masters and ascended masters, dear beloved Jesus, dear beloved Mother Mary, dear beloved Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, dear beloved Krishna, all those that I love and appreciate that are serving the plan of the light side, dear my heavens team, dear the soul of the blessings in the Shen Chi Jing He Yi calligraphy, I love you, honor you, and appreciate you. Could you please offer me a blessing to align my Shen Chi and Jing? Bless me to open my awareness to become more balanced in my life. You can at this time request of heaven an individual request for any one particular area of your life where you have the most suffering. Now we will do a quick forgiveness practice. Dear all the souls that I have harmed especially for this special request I just made with heaven. Please forgive me and my ancestors for any wrong thoughts or words or actions that have been caused you any suffering at any time. I deeply apologize. Thank you. I love you. Please forgive me. Okay. Now I will uh, trace this calligraphy on your behalf and keep your eyes closed, visualizing the column of light, Chant with me. Shen Chi Jing He Yi 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 Soul, heart, mind, energy, matter becomes one. Soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter becomes one. Soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter becomes one. Soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter becomes one. Shen Chi Jing He Yi. 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 Shen Chi Jing He Yi 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 I invite all souls of humanity that wish to align their soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter to join us to chant, but not to chant for yourself. I invite you to chant to serve all the other souls to align their energy and matter. Let us chant together for everyone else so that we can become one collectively. Shen Chi Jing He Yi 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 
shen qi jing he yi shen qi jing he yi shen qi jing he yi shen qi jing he yi shen qi jing he yi shen qi jing he yi Shen qi jing he yi, Shen qi jing he yi. Soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter becomes one. Soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter becomes one. So 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 heart, mind, energy, and matter. Becomes one. Shen qi jing he yi. 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 Shen qi jing he yi, Shen qi jing he yi, Shen qi jing he yi. So heart, mind, energy, and matter becomes one. 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 And now I want you to chant Shen Qi Jing He Yi blesses my condition. Shen Qi Jing He Yi. 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 Blesses my condition. Shen qi jing he yi blesses my condition. Shen qi jing he yi blesses my condition. Shen qi jing he yi blesses my condition. Shen qi jing he yi. 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 Blesses my condition. Shen qi jing he yi blesses my condition. Shen qi jing he yi blesses my condition. Shen qi jing he yi blesses my condition. Shen qi jing he yi. Blesses my condition. Shen qi jing he yi. Blesses my condition. How, how, how? Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
I will bow my head nine times to all of those who offered their service here today. You may do as you wish. We thank, I thank, all the beings of light, the divine, the Tao, and the source, my heaven's team, all of those that came to offer their service. I thank this most incredible service offered through the Shen Qi Jing He Yi Calligraphy and Master Sha's book called Soul, Mind, Body, Science. We are deeply honored and grateful for your incredible service. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How, how, how? I actually uh, could feel significant energetic movement in my body. Uh, the channels just opened up. Uh, prior to this practice today, I, I was feeling a very um, lethargic energy, the kind that Master Shah feels when he's uplifted. I'm confident that he was being uplifted because I am zapped, energetically speaking. I got seven hours of sleep last, last night. It should have been sufficient. But I'm just zapped energetically. And so I often know that that has to do with uh, higher frequencies coming in and more Shen changing blockages coming up to be cleared and removed. Also, I received a huge blessing yesterday uh, uh, from a master. You know, I honored $250 to receive a blessing. So I also honor. So when I ask you to consider honoring to, re to release some of your Shen Qi Jing blockages, um, that's, there's a balance there. Uh, I'm happy to honor for that because I know it would take me lifetimes to remove them. And so if you are one of those that wish to receive blessings to release some of your Shen Qi Jing blockages for an emotional problem, for a mental problem, for a physical pain or suffering, for anything that is just not happy in your life, could be finances, uh, I make no promises. It doesn't mean that it's going to entirely just disappear. But I can assure you, you will notice some differences. And in most cases, they're very uh, recognizable. And when you apply practices such as this on a consistent daily basis for that one area of your life, and you apply love and forgiveness, just like I gave you an example of earlier with uh, the, the blessing of receiving that ticket, then you will see that whatever that blockage is, could significantly diminish in a quick pace. The value of receiving a blessing from a master teacher such as myself, even directly from Master Shah, is priceless. In my lifetime, I have paid well over 10,000 of my own hard-earned dollars to receive these same kinds of blessings, little here and a little there, as it came along, because that is what allowed me to be in the position where today I can share with you this tremendous wisdom with such integrity and such confidence. I speak with confidence because I know very clearly the value of the wisdom. And whether you choose to uh, take advantage of the of the uh, coming to my live streams and my podcasts and just listening to the blessings again and again and again, that's a complimentary service. And without a doubt, you're receiving magnificent and huge blessings. If you're in financial restrictions, take advantage of those free blessings. You listen to them again and again and again, and you're clearing your blockages little by little. And pretty soon things become easier for you financially, and then you can afford to get a blessing for something that you've been suffering with. It works like that. It's the nature of our spiritual debt. The more we're suffering, the more spiritual debt we have. They are Shen changing blockages where we are separate from love. We are separate from the divine. So start doing more practices to open your heart and soul. Start doing more practices to forgive. Learn more by signing up for this podcast. Uh, uh, at the end of this live stream, if you're watching it on Facebook, subscribe to me. Be made aware of when I go live. Um, you can find out more about my podcast by coming to my website, asoulhealer.com, going to the blog